this week I'm keeping it simple. I'm not currently reading anything. I haven't started anything yet this week, but it is the 28th of June. So we have, including today, three days left of this month, and then we are into July. And my book club live shows that I'm a part of and the ones that are mine are going to be coming up in the second week of July. With everything that's been going on with Hamilton to and from the vets, I would usually like push them just a little bit closer to next week, but I just wanna make sure that I've read them. So I'm gonna be kicking off with not this, I've already read this. I didn't. I thought I'd got the book. I haven't got the book. So I'm going to be kicking off with Blood Witch by Susan Dannard. This is the third one in the Witchland series and it is the Blood Witch in the Witchland series is Adrian. So after Wind Witch and with the information I learned in Sight Witch, I'm really excited to crack into this one and it looks really chunky but it's 462 pages so it's not so bad. That being said, I have been reading a lot of like 300 and something page books. So it's been a while since I've had anything around 450. I've left all of the doors open and there's going to be a ton of background noise because Curtis is playing FIFA and you can hear the traffic outside. But this is the June book for Witchlands Long, which is a read-along of the Witchlands series hosted by Jade at Jade Ray Reads. I am a co-host and the live show for this I think is going to be on the 9th of July or the Saturday of that weekend if the weekend if the Saturday is not the 9th on Cody from Cody's Book Corner's channel at I think 9 p.m. BST. So the Witchlands read along starts off by following a young woman called Safi who is a truth witch and she has the ability to tell when people are lying which makes her extremely covetable. So because of this she has hid her magic for her entire life but one day she stumbles across a blood witch called Aduum and blood witches can smell your blood, figure out what kind of magic you have and then track you across many many miles. So Aduan gets a hint of Safi's blood and starts to track her down which sends her and her best friend Isyult on the run and they end up pretty much crashing head first and then getting wrapped up in this big political plot line that surrounds something called a 20 year treaty. So I have been enjoying this series so far but I do think it has a lot of flaws. It kind of reads in style like young adult but it has the political complexity and plot complexity of an adult fantasy and I just find the two together really really jarring because we have this really fast pace but lots and lots of information and politics and things about the world and intricacies of magic that you have to wrap your head around while also keeping on top of the pace of the plot which is super super fast. I feel like this series has been getting stronger with every book. I definitely enjoyed Wind Witch more than I enjoyed Truth Witch but it did follow me Merrick. Merrick is the Wind Witch who is my favourite character of the series so far so maybe I enjoyed it more because it was Merrick, maybe I didn't but Adrian is also or has also got the potential to be one of my favourite characters because he has a past that is shrouded in mystery and he is the most morally grey character of the series and we all know I love my morally grey characters. So I'm going to be picking this up very very soon. I'm going to start cooking dinner in around 20 minutes but after dinner I am going to work out because I haven't worked out since last Tuesday and I definitely feel like I could do with it. I've been feeling quite like stiff and lethargic and I could do with that little boost and I'm also hoping to get a bath this evening but Tammy is still home. He has an appointment with the specialist on Wednesday which is a checkup of his wound and the surgery they've done and I think they're probably going to want to keep him and do a little bit of extra surgery to close that wound that he's got on his tail just because of the location that it's in. I don't think it's going to heal on its own and if it does heal on its own it's going to take a really really long time and with it being so open and so close like it's directly above his butthole the whole area that it's in just makes it really high risk of infection because as well as it being by his butthole he also sits on it like he sits on his ass and open wounds are sticky so I do think they're gonna want to keep him don't know how long for I would estimate no more than a week but um I have no idea until we go to that appointment on Wednesday so I do want to spend some time with him he is also pretty much under constant supervision if I'm in here I'm checking in on him like every between like 30 minutes and an hour to make sure he's still got his cone on and he's still doing all right and I have spent all of today working so I'd like to spend some time with him this evening but I do also really want a bath so <laughs> We'll see what happens. I will be spending most of tomorrow evening with him anyway. The football's on at 5 p.m. which I'll be watching because it's the only time I ever watch football when it's World Cup or Euros and England are playing tomorrow and I don't really have anything on after that for the rest of the day apart from hopefully I'll be getting back into working out. Sending you 
things I shouldn't do Cause you're on my mind and I can't sleep tight And I know that we're talking night But it's not that type I don't want you to love Cause I'm fed up I can never be in love for you Oh, I'm fed up of this Cause you're my best dream Worst nightmare all at the same time Oh boy, you blow my mind Oh, I don't know how to feel for you You make everything so, so, so confused Best dream Worst nightmare all at the same time Oh boy, you blow my mind Oh, I don't know how to feel for you You make everything so, so, so confused Sending you Things I shouldn't do Trying to push you away So I can't say hey Cause I seem to like some self-control When I'm in these situations with my heart and soul Hey, I'm just popping in kind of briefly because I've pretty much read absolutely nothing. I think I'm on around page 60 of Blood Witch and I'm enjoying it so far but I really haven't done much reading. I can't remember what I did on Monday but I did definitely work out which was one of the main things I wanted to do. I've actually been watching a lot of the US office as well. I think that's what we did. We binged a lot of the US office on Monday where I actually intended to read. Speaking of the US office, actually I know it's a really popular show. I don't love it personal preference wise. I don't love shows that are in a documentary style format and aren't a documentary and I find a lot of it awkward more than funny but i have heard it gets better as it goes and i have to say i absolutely adore jim and pam and i'm watching it solely for jim and pam we have just started season three so like four episodes in bearing in mind that um we were only like halfway or a quarter of the way through season two on monday so we have binged quite a lot of it and then yesterday to try and tangle my necklaces while i talk because they're just really really tangled and it's been bugging me for a few hours but yesterday we watched the football it was england v germany i thought thoroughly expected us to be thrashed but we won 2 nil somehow it did not see that come in although from the talk from the men folk in the room when we were watching football because we hosted it and had a couple of friends around germany are not as strong a team as they have been in previous years and we have a decent team at the minute um i only watch tournaments so i have no idea and then today we took hamilton to the specialist it was his post checkup after he'd had the side bits of his wound stitched uh last monday they gave me two options because he still had an open wound that it's like maybe about this big it's shrunk a bit but it, it's still pretty big and it's right above his butthole and goes a little bit up his tail and we kind of gathered that we would have to surgically have it surgically closed because if it was left to heal by itself then it would maybe scar or it would never 100% heal so the best option was to have it closed surgically so I could either take him back for a week um and see if it shrunk a little bit more because then it's a small surgery and then take him back to the specialist where they were probably going to have to surgically close it because if it shrunk any further it would kind of like restrict his movement in his tail and stuff or we could just admit him to have it surgically closed like now the vet said to me there isn't a right answer there's nothing that you should be doing here there's no option that's better than the other so we've decided to have it surgically closed now because he it, it's difficult it leaves like a <sighs> I don't want to be too grim in this vlog but it leaves a little bit of a discharge behind which isn't a big deal it's not incredibly messy i just put like sheets over the sofa and stuff and it's not like incredibly like it's quite thick so it doesn't soak through stuff and it hasn't been a problem to manage at all it's just that things stick to it and because it's on his bottom he sits down and like it, it has been okay and not really picking stuff up but like it leaves everything crusty and obviously he has the original surgery he had on his rectum and also the stitches you got to keep everything clean so nothing gets infected and it is at a high risk of infection so if he has this closed now it will be two weeks until that is fully healed or like that should be the amount of time until it's fully healed and then he's done like everything's healed all good no more cones no more um sheets over stuff no more me being paranoid that him being too active because he had a little bit of pre-poop zoomies yesterday and i'm terrified of him like ripping any of his surgery open the only problem is is that because it is in a high risk of infection area there are just the standard risks of surgery so like infection bleeding anesthetic all of that stuff and then there's also wound breakdown which he said that's the absolute worst case scenario and with how hamilton has healed there is no reason for me to be overly paranoid that the wound is going to break down but wound breakdown was the main problem with his first initial surgery the rectum 
stuff that was going on. So I am a little bit paranoid about that um, and a little bit anxious about that. But that wound breakdown was caused because um, he'd built up a resistant form of bacteria. So they needed specific antibiotics to get rid of that resistant form of bacteria. And as soon as they found it, they got rid of it and it healed just straight away improvement from that so i think we're going to be all right i'm just real nervous i'm currently on sprints on jay's channel which is the last sprints for whatever thon and i'm editing my wrap up but i'm just feeling a little bit anxious also very tired because we also went to ikea as you saw after the vets because where i live the nearest ikea is pretty much where that specialist center is over an hour away so we thought while we were there we'd have a walk around ikea i got a couple of lampshades like big light fixture shades like the overhead lighting shades because we needed those since we moved and we never got any and ikea is super cheap of course so i picked up a couple of light shades um but we just really went for the walk around and something to do while we were there we actually haven't been to ikea at all since we moved here so yeah we did that which was a couple of hours and then there was road work on the motorway so it took us longer than it should have to get home it was also a rush hour by the time we were coming home and yeah i'm just Real tired and feeling a bit anxious, so I'm gonna carry on editing while I'm on sprints. I have a fortnight date tonight and hopefully sometime soon. I can also get some reading done because I had in my mind that I was gonna finish Blood Witch tomorrow, but I'm on like page 60, so that is not happening. Good afternoon, everybody. So I am currently still reading Blood Witch. I'm still not too far into it. Wow, we love this yellow lighting as well. That's slightly better, I guess. But I am 192 two pages into this so i'm severely slacking so i wanted to have at least started golden fool by today well by this week but also yes i wanted to start golden fool either today or tomorrow and i don't think that that is going to happen i have had a very busy work week um some of my candle making equipment broke today as well which means that i need to sort out a replacement for that which is a little bit inconvenient and i've also been multitasking making candles at the same time as packing orders which i was also doing yesterday so it's been a stressful couple of days and i do have to work tomorrow because i lost wednesday i've got editing to do tomorrow or i may be going to the vets to pick hamilton up i don't know but i'm currently 192 pages into this and I've got to a point now where I'm enjoying it a lot more. I want to say the last like 50, 60 pages. I've gotten into it a little bit better. I'm really enjoying that this is Adrian's book and we're finding out a little bit more about him. I really want to know about his father and his parentage because I have some theories about it that we've already discussed in the previous live shows. And I want to know like the exact, like I've picked up on some hints, which makes me think that we were kind of heading in the right direction. But I want to know for sure. I will say that I think one of the reasons why I struggle with these books so much is that Susan Dunnard doesn't really do any recapping at all. So when you start the book, like you're not refreshed on the main kind of plot points, not even in like a line. And with me reading these one a month, I feel like I could just do with a little bit more referencing. I think, I don't know if I mentioned in this vlog about how I find her plotting to be very subtle, which makes me feel stupid. Like, am I just too stupid to fully understand how she's tying things together? Or is it like common for authors to actually Actually help you with connecting like where the groundwork is coming from for these plot points and how everything ties together let me know what your opinion is on that because I normally don't struggle so much to understand the intricacies and the complexities of plot but um, I remember at the end of Wind Witch we found out something crucial about Merrick that I no longer remember the specifics of and it hasn't really been mentioned in this and I feel like it's super relevant to what's happening now and I'm gonna have to go back to Wind Witch and have a look for the specifics of that because there's no kind of like hint to it. I do feel like these books are kind of intended to be read in just one big binge session so you don't really forget anything that's happened because of the lack of recaps in here. But I'm aiming to get to at least page 330-ish today. It is currently around 5.30. I've just put dinner in the oven. We were maybe going to be picking Hamilton up this evening. His surgery went well yesterday. Everything went kind of to plan on that. The only real risks of it are minor or major wound breakdown which are like big serious scary risks but when i spoke to the vet this morning they still had a surgical drain in it and it wasn't producing much liquid which is a good thing so they were going to be possibly taking it out this afternoon and then he would be able to come home this evening so i was waiting for a call in the afternoon and they hadn't called me by five o'clock so i've just rang them i was told that ham is staying at least another night but i don't know the specifics of that yet so i think we'll be picking him up tomorrow as long as fingers crossed there's been no dramatic change 
change since this morning. But the way that the vets have been talking about how they were fine to just take his drone out this afternoon and then have me pick him up this evening makes me think that while there is a risk of wound breakdown and also infection, this is just not as much of a big deal as it was when he had the initial surgery, which it definitely isn't as much of a big deal because that was more extensive and internal. I'm just panicking because wound breakdown is what was happening with that first surgery. So just the thought of wound breakdown is making me really panicky, whereas he should be okay. I mean, I do this all the time with the vet. So they ring me and they tell me something, I'm fine, I'm not anxious about it, whatever. But then at 10 minutes after I put that down the phone, I'm thinking like, oh, but what if he's not being discharged today because something seriously bad has happened? Whereas it's kind of more likely that they just want to keep him in for more observation. And he had a surgery 24 hours ago. If they keep him in another day, it's not the end of the world. Better to be safe than sorry. But um, I'm freaking out about it. So I'm gonna read until my dinner's ready, have some food, watch some, probably New Girl or maybe The Office, depending on how we're feeling. And then work out because it's the Peloton All For One Festival at the minute. And I don't know whether I'm gonna do the 45 minute Gwen Stefani ride or one of Ali Love's 20 minute Tabitha rides um, with a 15 minute low impact ride as an extended cool down. I haven't decided yet, but I'm excited to work out. Um, trying to get back into my mojo with that. Obviously it's hard with my schedule being all over the place, but I'm enjoying that and looking forward to that this Never evening. Be in love for you. Oh, I'm fed up of this. Cause you're my best dream, best dream. Worst nightmare all at the same time. Oh boy, you blow my mind. Oh, I don't know how to feel for you. You make everything so, so, so confused. Best dream, best dream. Worst nightmare all at the same time. Oh boy, you blow my mind. Oh, I don't know how to feel for you. You make everything so, so, so confused. Time for smooth sex, sex, no regrets Living in the moment every time that we get undressed No, any kind of feeling can't come through Cause we're living in a space where we're a separate two. That's true, make sure that whatever you do When you walk out the door, you don't text me too soon Cause a message from you will be a message from you Unless it's been six days I love how deluded I was about being able to finish Blood Witch in four days because it is now Saturday past 1am, just past 1am. I'm going to bed now, but I'm on page 334. So I have 130 pages of this to read tomorrow. So um, yeah, my plans went a little bit awry, but Hamilton is home now and providing we have no problems with infection or anything in his wound, it should all be healed in two weeks and then he can take his cone off and all will be done. So um, we've been back in two to the vets. We went on Thursday to drop him off, Wednesday to drop him off, and today to pick him up. And it's not really a drive where I can read in the car because not a lot of it is on like smooth straight road. So I have had that and then all the work to catch up on because of the time that I lost when I was doing that. So I've also been back on regular workouts and binge in the office. We're now probably, I think we're just at halfway through season three. So yeah. I've been doing other stuff I shouldn't have been and I actually really want to read. I'm just struggling to find the time to actually sit down and read. But yeah, we will finish Blood Witch tomorrow. I guess I'll start Golden Fool next week and see if I can fit in the Bone Witch as well. Cause you're my best dream, best dream, worst nightmare all at the same time. Oh boy, you blow my mind, oh, I don't know how to feel for you. You make everything so, so, so confused. Best dream, best dream, worst nightmare. Hey, so it is just past midnight and I have just finished Blood Witch. Um, I always seem to do my vlog really late on Sunday evening, but I have actually been reading this throughout the day. And up till like after 9 p.m. I only had like 40 pages left to read, but we just started season two of the Buffy Watch Long in my Patreon Discord. And we've now upped it to three episodes per session, two sessions per week with like a 10, 15 minute break in between each episode. So from nine until nearly midnight, I was doing that. Otherwise I would have finished earlier, but I'm conflicted because this is my my lowest rated book in the series at three stars. It would technically be if I did half star ratings, which I don't, it would be a 3.5. And in terms of the book itself, I do actually think it is my favorite in the series in terms of it being just the book. I like this series, but I'm not overly 
attached to it. Like, I am going to be reading Witch Shadow next month because it's the last book that we can read in the Witchlands along at the minute, um, with one more book to come after that. So when that is released, I will also read that. But I'm really worried that I will not remember a single thing by the time this last book is released because I think the main issue with this series for me is that it's not necessarily a bad series. It's just not my personal taste in fantasy and it is very plot driven. There are tons and tons of characters in here and I've been following these for four books now with these characters aside from maybe three that have become more prominent characters that have been introduced um, a little bit later on. And I say four books, I'm counting the novella in that. It's like three core, core installments plus the novella. Like it's plot driven, but I don't know what the plot is. And I think that the reason why this one is three stars for me, where the others have been very low four stars is because at this point in the series with two books left, I expect to know a little bit more about what's going on. But like the book before this, Wind Witch, ends with three characters traveling somewhere to do something seemingly important. And the thing that those characters are doing, or at least that two of them are doing, kind of underpins Blood Witch, but we don't see those characters at all. Like one of them gets separated from the group and we follow that character, but the other two, we see one of them a little bit later on. And the, sorry, Hamilton's using his scratching post, but the original one, we literally just do not see at all. They are mentioned in other characters' perspectives as other people haven't seen them. But I have no idea what they are doing and why. And the thing that they're doing, like all of that stuff, I feel is really relevant to the core overarching plot. It's just, it feels like a lot of things that I would like to see develop are not developed throughout the actual narrative of the story. It's hard to explain. It is plot based and fast paced and that is definitely one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan because I'm a more character driven reader. But then aside from that, the plot is kind of just not, like I don't know what the plot is. I still don't know what the plot of this series is. Like I could tell you what some of the elements are. Like we have the 20 year treaty. There's also some stuff going on with one of the gods of the world. It ties into something that happened a thousand years in the past, which reminds me a lot of the Stormlight Archive and like the specific instance of what it is. But I could not tell you what the end goal for this plot is because aside from one character which is the character that I mentioned that he's doing something that seems kind of important but we actually never see them. The rest of them it's like things are happening to them they're not actually doing anything. So the main four characters of this plot are just constantly having things happen to them and dealing with that as opposed to really initiating anything. They don't really have a purpose they're just being swept along in this plot and I still don't really have a good grasp of what the plot is. Merrick who has been my favourite character throughout most of the series. I don't even know what's going on with him anymore. Lots of things happened in this book that I'm confused about. That tends to be my feelings leaving this because everything's so quick and there's so much going on that I just end up being really, really confused. And I will say that after the live show for every book, I get like reinvigorated to read the series because it really does feel like you need the group effort of the discussion where all of us will bring up like certain points and then we'll puzzle through them and kind of fit them together and make predictions and stuff. But without that, like I just feel completely lost with this series. I will say as well that Adrian is now my favourite character because I don't have a fucking clue what Merrick is doing and what's going on with him. I still really like him though but I also really like Adrian. This was the book that was mainly about him so it would make sense that I like him more now. And there's like a little bit of romance in this series and I like the elements of romance or some of them but it was just also really frustrating to read because a lot of the characters are like all following like their own mini plots that I imagine is going to tie together into a plot in the last book but it, it was just really frustrating because a lot of the characters were in the same location at different points in this book but they never saw each other. This plot just feels really scattered at the minute with all of these isolated things that are tied together but vaguely and each character you have like an isolated unreliable narrator from every perspective that you read from. So they don't have a clue what's going on and it's a struggle to tie everything together when they're pursuing their own thing, completely oblivious to what everybody else is going through. And like it repeats the same instance from each character's perspective. So for example, something might be happening somewhere and everybody has kind of heard about this thing happening, but they all have a different opinion or different knowledge of what it is that is exactly going on. So you have to kind of puzzle through each perspective to decide which one is the truth because all of them are unreliable as they all have a limited 
knowledge. Essentially, all of my ratings for this series have been skewed now because I gave the first two books in the novella four stars. I've given this one three stars. Um, I, I think the difference is just that I expected things to be more tied together in this one and to have a better picture and for us to start to be converging into some semblance of a plot with only two books coming. And these books aren't overly long. I just looked on Goodreads. This is actually 464 pages and which shadow on Goodreads is apparently exactly the same. I don't have a physical copy so I can't check for sure but it's weird that they're like exactly the same amount of pages. And I will say that I did like how things that happened in here tie to Sight Witch and I will say that Sight Witch is pretty much essential reading just for the lore and the knowledge that you gain in there. And I liked seeing some of our theories from the Sight Witch live show come true in this and also being able to tie things together a little bit better and understand certain elements of the plot because I'd read Sight Witch and because we talked about it and kind of knew what direction we were going with in that. Now I don't know whether we're going to have the same result when we read Blood Witch because obviously we have Jade in the group for the live shows because she created the read along and she has read all of them aside from Witch Shadow because it's only just been published and this will be the first time that she's reading it and I don't know to what extent Jade has kind of been gently feeding us information or like helping us along. So we'll see if I have the same like moment of clarity or a little bit of clarity after the live show for Blood Witch. So mixed feelings. It's like my favourite in the series but I'm just getting increasingly frustrated with the series. Also Hamilton is in the litter tray now, um, so if you can hear any of that noise. And I really hope he doesn't do a poop. He hasn't done a poop since he came home. No, he's peeing, I can hear it. But essentially when he poops because of where his wounds are, I then have to go in with a damp cloth and clean him up so that he doesn't get anything on his wounds or it'll sit there and become infected. It's a glamorous life that I lead right now. So that is about it for this week's vlog. I did want to at least start Golden Fill in this one as I have mentioned but I did not get to it. So um, the live show of Golden Fill is going to be on the 18th of July which is two weeks today when I'm filming this, a little bit less when you guys are watching this. And it's going to be on Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction's channel. So it was supposed to be next Sunday, but a couple of us have things going on and then the Euro final may be on Sunday. Well, it is on Sunday, but whether England are in it depends on whether I'm watching it personally. So we have pushed it back to the week after. So I don't really need to read Golden Fall next week, but I don't know whether I should just read it so that it is done. And I also possibly would like to read Bone Witch if I I'm reading Golden Fill next week. If not, I'll just, I'll do something else with the books on my TBR. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far. If you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows. With guns sitting under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.